Hello, um, uh, lockdown video, could be a long one. Um, I am going to try and do a brain dump of uh, simulator golf, A to Z. What do I know about these things? What do I, what's my experience? What, what can I do to help people that are looking into this and going, oh, what do I do? I've got no idea. Now, I could obviously charge a great amount of money for consultancy, or I can try and give as much information as possible in the hope that maybe um, you might find some of it useful and maybe some of the stuff that to hype with me sell uh, could be helpful for you. So, without further ado, we are going to start with our list of A's. Now, it's not just one A, it's, it's all the kind of things I can think of. The first A I can think of is artificial grass. Um, when you're building your simulator, obviously like my own one, um, I've chosen to have artificial grass. It doesn't need to be. Um, could be carpet, could be anything. Just bear in mind if it's concrete flooring, laminate flooring, when you hit a shot against the screen and it drops down and it lands on the concrete and bounces around, it will annoy you. So having something in front um, to soften the blow is great. Not all artificial grass is the same. If you get a thicker pile of grass, then you'll end up with a pile direction. And if you're putting off the end of this and wanting to see where it ends up, um, and it hits the pole direction, which happens to be left to right or right to left, it will make the ball deviate and you won't really get a good reading. So, bear that in mind. In general, a lot of the artificial grass companies supply putting turf, um, such as I've got here. Relatively cheap, you can get off cuts and remnants, as it's called, from the companies, just look for it. And you may be lucky that they have a size that you need. In my case, it was about four meters by five meters. They had an off-cut in the size, it was in the sale in January and I think it cost me about 100 quid for the whole lot to cover this area. And then you can cut out sections and um, put your mats in. Anyhow, the next day topic is aspect ratio. One of the, oh, I can't believe I've gone straight in with this. Uh, projectors typically come in 4-3, that means 4 horizontally, 3 units up. So you can multiply 4 times any number and 3 times any number to work out what size image that is going to fill. Um, or they come in 16 by 9 um, or 1080p, you know, resolution, different resolutions, which is widescreen format for kind of movies, 16 units across, 9 up, uh, which is actually what I've got here with the 4K projector. Or they come in 16 by 10 units up, so you get slightly higher, wider image, which is uh, very much, you know, comp um, often used in uh, well, IT, that kind of thing, gaming, those other areas. So the benefit of a 16 by 10 projector over 16 9 is you get a few more pixels, so arguably a better resolution. Um, a 4 3 is as though that traditional like non-widescreen TV format, um, which a lot of people that don't have the full width of space tend to go. But you can buy yourself a 16 by 10 or 16 by 9 projector and just force it into 4 3 mode. And when you do your calculators, there's, there's websites that do it to work out what projector will suit because each projector has a fixed kind of focal distance. Um, you will be working on the assumption that what is the width of your image based upon the native um, projector format. So if you are going to force it into 4.3, you're going to work out what is the height of your image going to be, what would that be the width in the native. So if it's 16 by 9, you'll divide that number by 9, the height, and then times it by 16. That will be the width you put in. And then when you put it up at the right distance, you will then force the projector into 4-3 mode and it will therefore project inside. That's the kind of thing that I help people with and I can supply projectors and um, please get in touch. But again, it's a very important consideration. Don't just go on eBay and think, oh, there's a cheap projector. That'll work great for me. It may not. It may not be the right um, focal point. It may not be the right resolution. You need to put a bit of thought into it. Wow, this could be a long video. Well, first, first drink. On we go. Um, another way, archery net. When people talk about archery nets for golf, you, they can mean for like catching the ball and the other areas, but typically they mean a baffle net, archery baffle net, and I mentioned that under the bees as well. It's a heavy material, durable, and it, it projects a good enough image. I've done plenty of videos in the past about it, which I would call a good image quality. And on a wide enough screen, it can kind of fill it nicely, and they're very durable. They are more durable than a lot of the impact screen materials. So um, it can be a good option for you. Hybrid may do sell. Um, one, I call it Type 1, and it's got reinforced edges and eyelets, and um, it's just often a cheaper way of people starting up. Then you can add the more kind of luxury grade impact screen materials, such as the Type 3 that I sell, or other ones that you find elsewhere which then give you that smooth image. The downside of, these are grip marks by the way, we're throwing clubs, we'll get onto that. Um, the archery screen does have holes in it though, it's a, it's a kind of weaved material, 
So you get light bleeding through, and if there's any light source behind, you get light bleeding that way as well, which will affect the image. So that's why if you're going to be doing things like gaming, um, cinema, where you want to watch movies or watch sports, then um, I would say the kind of luxury grade material, the, the more expensive premium um, impact screens are superior. And also for things like I've got a 4K projector, you know, if I want to really see all of those pixels, then I'm not going to want to have all the individual. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going to want to have all the individual dots showing up. Um, on, I'd lose dots. Sorry, I've lost, <laughs> lost my track. I'd lose dots through the uh, image where there are holes and things like that. So anyhow, but it's a good option for people starting up. Uh, next one's angle of attack. Why is angle of attack important? Um, I'm only going to really get onto mats. I'm just saying, if you are quite steep, I used to be very steep with my swing. Um, then you want a mat that can actually handle that, and some mats, not all mats are the same. Some mats will be more forgiving and allow you to kind of hit down and through. Some mats will just grab the club, or you have the traditional driving range mats where the, ball, the club might bounce off the mat and kind of skid through. Um, and that can put stress on the joints, elbows, shoulder, uh, various things. So when you are considering what mat to use, do look and research and take in people's um, opinions on is that a forgiving enough mat for your type of swing? Do you want to be a picker or a digger? Um, durability of the mats, I mean, I've sold different ones and we'll get onto that, but it's just to bear that in mind. Um, if you are quite steep, I like the T-Turf um, type mats, which um, I'll get onto. Uh, next one I've got is Asus BT400. That's very specific. What is it? I can't show you it because it's plugged in, actually I could. It's a little USB dongle. It's about between 10 and 13 quid or typically. And for anyone that's going to be using, it's a Bluetooth dongle, um, if anyone's going to be using GC2s or anything that communicates via Bluetooth, um, it's great. Uh, so many people have got it and just put it on in a USB extension lead and make sure it's within that one and a half, two meters typically of your device. And it's a great way of being able to ensure that you get a good connection and the Bluetooth distance isn't too far away. So um, it's, yeah, it's a good one. On to B, one to B. Whew. B is for bungee cord. I may end up taking this stream down if it's rubbish. <laughs> um, what is bungee cord? Bungee cord is this kind of stretchy, stretchy stuff. And um, it's used a lot in camping and tying things down. Bungee cord is your friend when it comes to a DIY build and probably some commercial ones as well. Um, I use bungee cord down the sides of my screen where I'm attaching um, the tarp clips, which we'll get onto, to the angle iron. I didn't put a, a, a should have been for angle iron. It's something you can attach to the wall with a little slotted angle iron, little holes in it where you can attach stuff through. But anyhow, ball bungees, also in B, is bungee cord that's got a ball on it, and you can basically thread that through, wrap it around something, put it over the ball socket, and then you get your kind of tight fixing. If you need to, you can do it twice, you can get different length, and just having lots of them are great, so you can do all of your fixings. The benefit of bungee cord over other approaches is it does have flexibility, so if you hit a shot near it, as well as the screen absorbing the shot, the bungee cord will also do it a bit. Now, bungee, you, some of the commercial frames you get kind of have bungee cord woven in and out at the side, and that's not a ball bungee, that's like one piece of cord. Um, but I find just getting a bag of ball bungees off Amazon or wherever can be very helpful. Um, next B is Bertie Pro Tees. What are these? They look like shuttlecocks, really, without the rubber bit on the end. Um, Bertie Pro Tees are one of the tees that you can sit on the surface easily and hit your shot. Now, you can use real tees. Oh, what one away? I've got a chair in the way. There we go. Um, you can uh, use real tees when you're using tea turf and insert them, or you can have the rubber tees through some mats that come through. Um, and they're, they're just great. I like to, with T-Turf, like the ones that I sell, I sell T40 and T35, more T40 now. Um, I don't really want to insert a T every single time because I will be pushing those fibres down and disturbing the mat. So I'd rather have a T that sits on the surface. Bertie Pros are the cheapest. I do resell them. Um, and they do break. And that's kind of a dilemma of how much, how often do you want to replace them. Um, and it's one of those things, there are tomahawks out there, there are other solutions, the classic rubber winter tees, um, which I've also got a bucket load of, like these things. Um, but I tend to prefer having a tee that sits on the surface rather than pushing in when it comes to tee turf, simply because the amount of wear and tear that you're going to put on the mat that uh, you want to minimise. What's next? Ball data. What is ball data? Ball data is obviously what the ball does. So when you hit a golf shot, 
regardless of how crap or how well you've approached the ball, I shouldn't swear on this video, um, once you've hit it, then you're going to know what is going to happen to the ball. Now the GC2 is looking at the ball data, and the Skytrax is looking at the ball data. Most launch monitors are looking at the ball data, although some add, add club data. Um, the ball data is going to be the launch angle horizontally and vertically. It's going to be the ball speed, how fast it's going, and it's going to be the spin. Spin axis, I didn't put that in the rest, is um, what angle it's going at that way or that way. Um, or most of the time it's broken down into backspin and side spin. And I've had debates, people saying, well, there isn't actually backspin and side spin, but it makes it easier to visualize the ratio between how fast it's spinning backwards and how fast it's spinning sideways. By the way, for anyone that's in the symbol, this is going to be the most boring video ever. It's just kind of hopefully going to be a guide and helpful for people that are starting up. So skip on if you're not interested. Um, I said that politely. Please subscribe if you are and <laughs> you think it's good. Um, so ball speed, as I say, bear in mind, is the simulator software. If you're wanting to play competitions, tours, taking part in courses, practicing on the range, um, all you need is the ball data. Um, the software does not use the club data, doesn't care about how you approached it. All it needs to know is what did that ball do and replicate that within its algorithm on the, on the um, golf course to show how the ball would fly. Um, only if you really want to get into enhancing your swing and learning how and what you did do you need club data. And that's where something like a GC2, you can add HMT. If you've got the TrackMan, the radar systems, they will provide some club data or a lot of club data depending on what you've spent and what you do. Um, but it's just worth bearing in mind the software itself cares about the ball data only in terms of representing that shot. Uh, ball speed, I don't know why I put this on there, ball speed, there's obviously loads of players I play against. In, the simulated environment's great for just trying to swing as hard as you can, knowing that regardless of where the ball ends up, you have lost it, you can go and have another go. And um, on the tour, uh, online golf tour and its replacement, we've been doing a lot of um, long drive competitions and they're, they're fun. Bluetooth. Um, not all systems will need it. Some are USB connected, but um, as I mentioned, the Asus BT400 is great for a Bluetooth adapter for the PC. Um, but also, the Bluetooth, when you're setting up and buying the IT equipment, Bluetooth keyboards. A wireless Bluetooth keyboard could be really, really handy. Because most of the time, although you might go with a touchscreen monitor, it's helpful to have one of the, I use one of these all the time for lining up my putts. It's just a bit easier to interact with and quicker to kind of do what I need to. If I'm doing any other uh, gaming, then you can have little portable ones. And again, just Bluetooth wireless, uh, Bluetooth keyboards and really, really handy um, things. Uh, then B is BaffleNet. Um, BaffleNet is the archery grade net. It's the same type of thing. Now they're not all equal. Some have bigger holes than others. And that's where you know they won't be as great for projecting an image because most of the light will bleed through. So you do need to bear that in mind. As I say, we resell um, or I resell a archery grade material that I think gives a good image and is very durable. But baffle net is effectively the same term. Uh, just bear in mind, uh, make sure it's white. Don't just go and order yourself a baffle net because a lot of them come in green as standard because they are designed for archery. On to C. Oh boy, why did I agree? Why did I think about doing this? Uh, see, it's the curtains. In my design, I've got uh, plywood behind here. I've actually just put chalkboard paint on that. So I'm also seeing chalkboard paint, so I can actually use that as a um, as a blackboard at the side. I've just got um, uh, well, uh, plywood on the walls. So in this case, I've got curtain material. I couldn't really care less about whether it absorbs an impact. Does it help with like absorbing impact? Not at all. Not at all. The ball just hit it and bounce around. But it doesn't matter, it's not going to do any damage. So in my case, the curtain's just for framing it. But if you've got a bit of room, any kind of heavy material on the curtain, you're only going to be hitting it with the odd shank or some outrageous shot left. The ceiling is different, of course. Your ceiling protection is going to take quite a lot of shots from wedges. So that does need to be good. But in this case, I've done videos in the past. I use about a 30 pound thin material, folded back on itself. And in four months, it looks like it's not even had any wear or tear. PU coated nylon can do the job for size enclosures. Um, but basically, a cheap and easy way is just to have a curtain rail or hooks or fixings with a bit of material dangling down the side. Ideally, just inside of where you've got your fixings, um, where you've got things like our fixed bungee cords, and it just means it's a cheap and easy, quick and quick way of uh, getting things up and running. Next, cable ties. What are cable ties? I don't show people what cable ties are. They are these things, but I will do. 
that's the purpose of the video. Cable ties are the things you wrap around, slot through, pull tight. Um, can be great for attaching stuff to eye hooks, slotted angle iron, all various things. And in my first build, where I had a steel frame that I built, I had cable ties everywhere and periodically they would break and fall down and I'd be picking them up and I'd think, which one broke? I've got no idea. Another one would break and they're brittle. They will break. So that's where bungee cord is that bit more durable. Now ball bungees, they will break as well. If they're too tight, too stressed, the little ball bit will come off or the cord. So these things are kind of consumables, but bungee cord has that bit of flexibility will last longer with the approach you're taking. Cable ties are that much cheaper, probably quicker to, to use. Just bear in mind, ball goes near them or hits them, they may break. Um, carbine hooks, what are carbine hooks? Carbine hooks are these things. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, used in camping, I think, quite a lot. Um, I've got a steel wire approach, and if you find this useful, go and look at, please check out my, I say please, I've got to say please, Please check out my um, Rebuilding My Golf Sim series, part seven's the finale, although actually I changed the flooring afterwards, but we'll get onto that. Um, and I've got a steel wire going across there, a second one, a third one, and I've got archery screen folding four. Basically, I've got lots of um, kind of heavy-ish material hanging on the um, steel rope, steel wire, whatever you want to call it, and I hang them using carbine hooks put them through the tarp clips and grip on and it just means it's a nice easy quick way of attaching them I can um, detach them very quickly and you can get different sizes just go to any of the metal companies like metals for you metalstore.co.uk um, and you can get carbine hooks and they're very handy very handy things uh, la, 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 la. carpet what is carpet <laughs> okay I don't think it's everywhere what carpet is but um, if you don't have a freestanding enclosure where you're kind of putting netting or material around the side um, and you're or you're squashed for space you don't really want to have to leave 30 40 centimeters between the edge of your curtain to catch to, to catch the ball and stop it hit, damaging your wall um, you can actually just think well actually why don't I just stick some carpet um, on the wall or on the ceiling as well and it means if the ball hits it a thickish carpet will absorb the impact a bit but mainly it'll just allow it to hit it and waft down and hit the screen and bounce back to you. It's just a cheap way of being able to kind of pad the room. You can use acoustic foam tiles, you should have put that under A. I've only had a bad day thinking about this. Um, but yeah, it could be good. Just make sure it's not a carpet that's like kind of fluffy and that bits fall off as you hit it. I tried a prototype for having that to protect my top bar and frame a year ago and I hit one shot and the carpet just sprayed um, threads all over the top of the impact screen and I was like picking them off with cell tape for a little while so just bear in mind a marine grade carpet I think is uh, is uh, often mentioned. Uh, C is for CTP as well, CTP closest to the pin if you find yourself good software and a good tour you can take part in competitions including closest to the pin, unlimited closest to the pin where you can repeat things. Um, I haven't actually put tour but if you're, I got into this mainly because I wanted the competition. I've taken part on a world rankings leaderboard, Ryder Cups, and those kind of things. And in my case, online golf tour um, and uh, future derivatives uh, were perfect for me, absolutely perfect for me because they took it seriously that they allow people to compete using different launch monitors. And I'll continue using that. That was my motivation for getting into this. C is also for club data. What is club data? Well, we said what ball data is. Club data doesn't care about the ball. All it cares about is how you hit that shot rather than what happened as a result of it and that's where if you're wanting to really work on your game game having something like the hmt add-on for gc2 having a radar based system that gives you club data you can use the clip-on ones things like the sky pro in the past i'm not sure what the other ones are out there that will give you some though maybe not as accurate um, but they they're the things that will let you really work on your game and understand your angle of attack your impact location a lot of the time they will force you to put dots on your clubs. In the case of HMT, I need to put dots on the clubs so that it can actually detect the uh, dots and then say, okay, where was the ball strike accordingly, what speed, what angle of attack, and various other stuff. I don't really work on my game. I bought one because I kind of wanted the whole setup. I should really sell it, but uh, I'm not. Um, C is also for chunging it. <laughs> what is chunging it? Without naming the person, chunging it is when someone absolutely is just going to go in take part in a competition like an unlimited ctp and just bang it out for like hour and hour and hour and hour and end and it is named after somebody who put in the uh, serious hours to nick one of the uh, unlimited ctp competitions d Woo! 
Uh, it is the DIY. I've done another video in the past. Um, not everybody wants to DIY. Most of my business is focused on people that wanted to source components and I'm helping them put things together. Um, at the moment, I'm not providing a full turnkey, turn up, build the thing. I may do later this year, or I say later this year, if and when um, we're released. Um, but at the moment, it's about providing the knowledge, like this, these videos, and the components to allow somebody to build their own enclosure, like I've done here, and like I did in my seven part series of videos. I've done a previous one about building a frame type approach. Um, I'll give a quick shout out to Lee Whitaker, who did a video recently and mentioned that I'd helped him with uh, one of his designs. Um, and, and it's something you can do if you've got a little bit of DIY skill. I'm, I'm the worst DIYer. I start with like a, a little little raw plug, start drilling into the wall, and by the, t by the end of it, I've got like one of those huge raw plugs that should be supporting like 200 kilos or something just because the hole got bigger and bigger. So partly it's down tools, but, it's, but I've managed to build all this on my own without anybody help at all, including mounting the screen. Um, and it's it's not that difficult, so you can do it. But if you don't want the hassle, or you want to get one of those frames, then the commercial enclosures that other companies sell, I could and can resell some. Um, do take that stress away. Like you get your steel frame, you get your padding that goes around it, you get your custom made screen, you get the video or the instructions that are going to help you put it together. You know, I'm not saying one approach is right. It comes down to budget, it comes down to whether you want to customise your own look and feel or whether you just want to go and get, just give me something that works and take the hassle away. So DIY isn't for everybody. Uh, dots, um, a lot of the systems you use may require dots. Um, I did a video a while back with the Mevo Plus, which was very interesting, really liked the unit, had a few question marks about the indoor spin axis, like I do with some radar systems, um, which, which I haven't been able to answer because I've not had the unit again, but um, it did require you to put a dot on the golf ball and to place the dot in a certain location, which after a little while was a little bit annoying for the back. Um, however, I also have to put dots on my clubs, which I believe makes them illegal for competitions, uh, proper competitions. Thankfully, I don't do proper competitions, as in real golf. Um, and, you know, dots may be needed. There are reflective dots, official ones, there are aftermarket ones. I found for HMT the aftermarket ones to be Unfortunately, they just haven't worked with my HMT unit, um, so I'm probably going to end up buying more official ones because they have worked. Um, but just bear in mind, you may need to have to put dots on a ball or a club with certain systems to be able to get things to read. Uh, D is also for a display port. Um, oh, IT issues. So when people are buying, it used to be easy, it was just HDMI cables. Now when you're buying um, P gaming PCs, uh, particularly with the you know the good new RTX graphics cards or and other brands that are available, um, they typically have like one HDMI and lots of DisplayPort adapters. Um, and if you end up doing silly things like plugging in your HDMI cable to the um, not to the dedicated graphics card to the other port on the back of the PC, which is the integrated or the onboard and graphics card, you could get graphical glitches and weird things happening. You want to make sure you're plugging into the graphics card. Secondly. Um, if you are deciding that, okay, I want multiple screens, I've got one, two, three here, then you're going to need either display port to HDMI adapters or display port to HDMI, HDMI cables. If you are going for adapters, or I don't know about cables if it works. I, oh, by the way, I could get things wrong here. This is just, as I say, it's what I, what I the best is, <laughs> passing on knowledge as, as I understand it. Um, do bear in mind you want an active, um, an active display port to HDMI adapter. To be able to make sure it's fully recognized uh, when you're being able to say do you want to duplicate screens extend screens maybe watch sport on this movie on this screen while i'm going to be playing golf on these two those kind of things or get yourself an hdmi splitter a good quality one that can support whatever resolution you're running i'm running 4k so therefore it needs quite good cables quite good components um, but get yourself an hdmi splitter which will allow you to duplicate the screen from one single hdmi source It'll be one HDMI cable in, two going out. Um, but as I say, you won't then have the option to decide, I'd like to have my ball data here and I'd like to have the, the um, golf course on the other screen. You just have to accept it's going to be the same image on both. Again, real basic stuff. Sorry about this. It's, it's just one of those, one of those things. I'm just going to brain dump it all. Um, Double-sided double -sided tape. Uh, Double-sided tape. Um, when I've got things like my mats, um, I've got uh, foam tiles underneath to slightly raise the floor so it's level with the mat, so I've got a perfect little edge there. 
Um, I have actually secured them in place on my laminate floor just using industrial double-sided tape. So it sticks to the bottom and it sticks to the bottom of the mat. One on the side, one on the side, maybe a bit forward, and it stops anything moving. Obviously, if you've got a dusty floor like concrete or something, uh, you may need to go with a different approach or something more sturdy, but it works great where you've got that relatively clean surface on both sides to secure mats and stop them moving. E is for enclosure. Discuss that, you can either build your own, um, do padding, various things like I've done, just think, well, I've got a room here that's dedicated for this, I may as well use the room rather than have it freestanding. Um, but yeah, enclosures are out there, you can go and find them through myself or through other um, suppliers, and they'll give you that kind of full kit to uh, do what you need. Um, it is also for E6 Connect, when it comes to software, um, there's you get the proprietary software, things like something like the uh, Foresight GC2 comes with FSX or can, can come with FSX. Um, used to be FR1. Um, if you get Trackman, then you get the Trackman Virtual Golf. Um, and they are good, but a lot of my customers are generally buying like used GC2s or buying Skytrax, and then you want to use them with other software. And generally, the, the options were Jack Nicholas Perfect Golf, which I use on most of my videos, which Trackman. At the moment, officially turning off at the end of August. I'm really hoping they won't, and they may well. It, anyhow, that's the, the it's been turned off at the end of August. Um, and you've got TGC19, which I also do some videos on, um, which supports SkyTrack and GC2 and some other systems. Um, and the third one, as we're on E, is E6 Connect, uh, which is best. It, that comes down to personal preference. Um, I've done videos comparing them. Look at the graphics. Look at the capability of the game modes. Look at what tours. Um, if you want to take part in, part in competitions, what tours are supported, and draw your own conclusion on how serious you want to take these things and which is the best system. If you need any advice on it, please get in touch. I'm happy to do so. F is for fairways. Why have I put fairways? This isn't really a general golf one. Um, simulator golf is different to in real life golf. You know, in, 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 when I'm out on the course um, playing proper golf, you know, hitting fairways is really important because um, I don't go out very often. And if it's sitting nicely on the fairway, I've got you know a bit of confidence that I can stand there and hit the shot because I swing so many times. If it's deep in the rough, I haven't really practiced how I'm going to get that ball out of there and what's the connection going to be like. In simulator golf, on nearly all of the software, not all, um, you can hit it into deep rough. It will automatically find the golf ball, and you can then choose. You know what? I'm going to take a three wood. I might I might lose 20% of the power, but I'm still going to get it 200 yards in the direction. In real life hit it into the deep rough, I'm not hitting a three wood 200 yards. So some people will be scoring ridiculously more better, so better than they would in real life, such as myself. I can't break 80 um, in real life, I haven't yet, been very close. Um, but on a simulator tour event, I've shot a 60. So it just shows how different, and it's not just fairways, it's putting as well, and short game, there is it. Uh, Jay, I put Jay, is for Jace, my good mate Jace in Australia. A lot of my videos I'm paired up with Jace, and that's just a shout out for my good my good friend. F uh, what the <laughs> F is for Jace. Sorry, Jace is for Jace. Why did I put my there? Why did I play? Oh boy, that's a Jace thing to do. Anyhow. Um, F is for Flight Scope. Uh, there's various suppliers, SkyTrack, Trackman, Flight Scope, Foresight Sports as well. Um, you know, there's a range of launch monitors out there. Um, they've got pros and cons. It comes down to budget. Um, anything less than probably a SkyTrack or Mevo Plus, such as the OptiShots um, systems where you don't even need to hit a golf ball. You know, they can be fun and they can be a good way of playing golf through the winter and in those conditions, but you need to probably get up to the Mevo Plus at the moment SkyTrack to really get into that kind of genuine, getting proper, proper um, feedback from the shots you're hitting. Um, F is for phone tiles, um, interlocking phone tiles, you can get them off Amazon, get them off eBay. Great for putting under, um, a very cheap way of making like a little jigsaw. They're used often for like fitness things and blah, 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 studios or whatever. And you can get 10 mil and 20 mil and you can put them on top of each other like I have. And you can then put some um, non-slip underlay or put um, artificial grass on top. And you can kind of level up your surfaces. Great if you want to have a level stance mat, a level hitting surface or a, a um, hitting strip. And level it up to the bit of grass that you're going on to. Um, just, yeah, just a good way. So interlocking foam tiles, I think EVA foam tiles are often called. Uh, very good thing. Uh, this for FSX, that's the proprietary software for um, GC2. Mentioned that. Um, really good for club fitting. 
practice range, looking back in, at your plated data. I'm not a fan of the graphics. I still think they look dated compared to things like TGC19 and Jack Nicklaus Perfect Golf and E6 Connect. But um, yep, uh, that's what it is at the moment. Um, F is also for full verbal. Now, my username is V8 Verbal. I suffer rage when it comes to golf, but particularly indoor. So I've smashed clubs. I mean, all of these, you can't quite see, but there's club marks all down the side. There's grip marks from things. Um, full verbal is what happens when you reach the 100% rage moment and things all start to go wrong rapidly. So it's now known as full verbal. Anyhow. Uh, G is for GC2, as I say, Foresight Sports, I bought a GC2, I bought four over my time. Um, my first one was about five years ago, I was considering buying um, a different system and uh, the GC2 just was a nice little package, convenient to carry around, it's just been really reliable. Um, I find the used market has been great in the sense that I've bought four or five, I said five. Um, and they've all worked well and then I've sold them on, I've upgraded to a newer serial number and just kept doing that. So I wouldn't change the GC2 for anything, although I did like the Mevo Plus, if I could be reassured on the spin axis, I think um, that would be a very nice unit too. And also the battery issues that happened with the early batch and that would be a really interesting unit for me um, going forward. G is also for graphics card. When you buy your gaming laptop, gaming PC, the simulation software is um, resource hungry. It needs a good graphics card to be able to run it. You're not going to be able to run a great si simulator experience using your work laptop, for example. So you're looking at the NVIDIA cards or the, oh, I can't think of the alternative company. Um, oh, it should be. I want to say AMG. It's not AMG, is it? Maybe it is. Uh, anyhow, I'm sure they're based down in, um, <laughs> based down in Maidenhead for work for ages, I think. I could be wrong. Anyhow, um, but you're going to need a decent graphics card, so you're looking at generally the 9, 960s, 970s, or the 10, 50, 60, 70 series, up to 80s. Um, you know, obviously not just graphics card, you need a decent enough processor, but um, just bear in mind you're not going to be able to just use a typical work laptop to be able to run the software. Not going to happen. If you buy yourself a laptop, um, it's going to burn, run hotter and it could potentially burn out. I bought one and after about two and a half years the graphics card burnt out due to the cryptocurrency mining. There were no graphics cards to replace it. It's basically now an expensive paperweight that I can't use. So I've chosen to go with a desktop tower unit simply because the components can be replaced, upgraded, etc. going forward. Um, and you get a desktop unit cheaper than you would for the equivalent laptop. So again, just worth bearing in mind. On to H. H is for hybrid me. Hybrid me, me. So I, I worked in IT for oh, 20 years, um, selling business IT solutions, security software, um, that kind of thing. Uh, very much uh, business focus, and um, I, I would say burned out, but I reached a point where I, I needed a bit of a break, and I got into golf simulation just to build one for fun, and then thought, oh, maybe I can help some people build them a little bit cheaper than having to go out and spend 50 grand on full systems like um, a lot of companies were selling. And that's where I am today now, selling screens, selling mats, selling uh, projectors, PCs, some consultancy, um, which I try to provide free of charge, but um, someone very kindly actually offered some money today because of the help I'd given them. So that was a very, very kind of them and um, I appreciate that. And it's the kind of approach that Hybrid Me are here to help people build simulators and hopefully get the fun. Although I, although I suffer rage, I still come in here every day almost and, and play, um, get the fun and the uh, yeah, the enjoyment, the competition that I've had, made so many friends on tours and stuff, so that's why I set up Hybrid Me. Um, H is for hole-in-one. Um, I've had one hole-in-one on the simulator, and it was on a closest to the pin competition. It was actually set on a course in space. Now, it was a course in space that had greens, so I still think it counts. <laughs> but, um, you know, you're automatically aimed at the flag. Um, I've got the data, I can align with the lines on the mat, so does it count? No, no it doesn't. I still need to get a hole in one. H is also for HMT. HMT is the add-on for GC2. I've mentioned that if you want to add club data. H is for horizontal keystone correction. Back to projectors. The aspect ratio is important. Uh, the resolution of course is. I'll get on to later what else it is. Horizontal keystone correction is very important if you want to have your projector anything other than central with your screen. 
Vertical keystone correction means I could have it higher or slightly lower, but you wouldn't want to have it lower, higher, and it would make the adjustment to straighten up the image based upon the height. Horizontal keystone correction means it will do the same thing on the side. So if you're limited on space and you don't want to create a shadow, you might want to have a projector over to the side of the room, angled in. You're going to need one with horizontal keystone correction, and typically at the kind of budget end, um, you're looking at Epsons that often have it, and Panasonic, where you might be getting up to the kind of thousand pounds plus mark um, to get the projector that has horizontal keystone correction. Um, don't think you can just buy one again, stick it off to the side, it won't work. It will mean you'll have a warpy, um, wonky image. Um, though, as I say, most people will see them on them. Oh, it is for impact screen. Um, Mention it, you've got archery grade, you've got some thinner type impact screens. I used to sell one called Type 2, um, which gave a very good image, but unfortunately it was a bit noisy when the ball hit the screen. You had that kind of thud of it hitting, a bit like a builder's tarp, tarpaulin. Um, and you've got the thicker type, uh, very smooth, easy to hang, like my Type 3 and others out there. Um, and we'll get on to the different types of them, but the impact screen is the thing that absorbs the impact of the golf ball most of the time. Though do bear in mind, the further back you have to go, like some radar systems want a bit more ball flight, then the more likelihood when you're hitting wedges that it will actually be a lot of your wedges will be hitting your ceiling protection, so that needs to be considered rather than hitting the screen. Oh, how close can you be? Well, you can be as close as you want to be able to swing a club. The tighter you make the screen, the more likely you're going to have the ball bouncing back um, at you. So again, I always talk about like taut but not tight with the screen. Um, certainly my type 3 um, screen material that I sell. Um, I is also for IRL, in real life. That's a lot that play a lot of simulated golf, talk about in real life golf and use IRL. Um, but as I mentioned, there are big differences. You always find your golf ball, you get a read for the putt, you can see the angles, undulations, you can hit three words out of the rough. And um, there is software being developed that is changing those things to make it more realistic so when you're in the deep rough you may get a bad line you therefore need a club that's going to launch it high enough that's you know that's good thinking and stops uh, fools like me thinking that i'm uh, one of the best golfers on the uh, sim world um when in reality i really shouldn't be uh, scoring that well eyes for integrity um <laughs> there are different tools out there some are for fun and it doesn't matter if i hit a bad shot i can click rewind or i can stick a bit of a boost that when i hit a shot i maybe maybe i think you know what i carry I carry the ball much further than this system showing me, so therefore I need to give myself 10% or 5% extra on the shots. Um, as long as everyone's doing that, I guess there's no argument that's okay, but um, I, I'm pretty confident that this thing knows how far I've hit it. Um, also, what's stopping me teeing the ball up on the fairway? So I've hit a shot, I've got like 200, 270 to go. I can't get there with a three wood, but what about if I tee the ball up again and hit the shot? Um, these are things you just have to bear in mind. You either need a tour that is going to try and enforce rules and make sure that people aren't doing this and, and give penalties when it does, or you just recognise, oh, who cares? I'm just having fun playing fun and it doesn't matter to you. And those are things that you just need to uh, think about. If I hit a bad shot, quick, exit the software before it reads the shot. These are things that people have done. And, um, or maybe it's going to be practising the shot. So I've, I've taken part in competitions where we're playing in a four-man competition. You can hear someone hitting shots and they're practicing the next shot they've got in between. Again, is that right? You wouldn't do it on a golf course. Should you do it in sim golf? It comes down to what you want to do. J. J is for uh, JNPG, Jack Nicklaus Perfect Golf, developed by Perfect Parallel, um, now part of Trackman. It's the software I've used for a long time um, on, the, on the videos over the last few years. Um, so many people, so many good friends. Um, I remember beta testing it or using the early beta uh, way back. That will be about five and a bit years ago, I think. Could be wrong. Um, and uh, I just found it integrated with the best tour that on the planet, which was online golf tour at the time, and has been absolutely brilliant. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll see going forward. There's uh, I'll get on to that. Um, Jace for Jace. <laughs> I'll give my second shout out, not I is for Jace. I wonder if it's because it's like, oh, I don't know. Okay, uh, K, K, why did I put King, I put King Cobra in there, I don't know why. I'm giving a shout out for a manufacturer, I don't even use their clubs mainly. I have got the King Cobra on Forge Tech. I think I was struggling with K, it might, I might find another K in a bit. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a brand, that's it. <laughs> That's what we the launch monitor. The launch monitor is probably it's the brains of your simulator. Um, regardless of how much you spend on the rest of it, if you have something that is rubbish, 
and can't read your shots well, then I, I'd rather spend the money on the technology so I actually get some confidence in the numbers being presented to me. So, as I say, there's a whole range. There were a couple of dubious releases, again, I'm not naming manufacturers, where, where the system promised this and that, the best of both worlds, and it didn't deliver. Um, and there were, there were weaknesses in some systems, as I say, just check that within your environment, this is right. Camera-based systems, I believe, handle spin very well indoors. Radar can struggle, but also a lot of people have been saying um, some of the ones that have given them really good experience. So maybe it's just very specific to your setup and do your research to choose what is going to be what you need. And there are compromises. You may not have a budget for a new or a refurbished or used GC2, in which case something like the Skytrack um, offers a great entry point. Um, I am a Skytrack reseller, I use a, a GC2, so that alone probably says, um, I'm, not, I'm not being hypocritical, if you've got the budget for a GC2, it is a more reliable system than the Skytrack, but it does the same thing, it's reading the same all day, so it's a camera based system, it just does it more reliably, uh, more often than the Skytrack. I've done a comparison video where I hit them both against each other, hitting over the top of one, and the numbers across the whole were very good, um, so it's not that it's you're going to get bad reading, you can't trust it, it's just going to be you may get the odd no read, misread, those elements, and that's where budget comes into it, as well as the capability of the unit. And there's also for lights. Oof, in your sim, um, I would normally have all the lights off, I'd just have that one spotlight next to my projector, which actually isn't on um, for this video, and it would be shining down, it's, it's not a too focused, some people have like a really focused one, I've got a bit of a, like, a spread on it, and it's perfect for me hitting, I can see, I, have, I always have my clubs lined up in an order so I know which to grab. I have made the mistake of putting the back wrong and it annoys me when you flush one into the wrong club. But um, it means I don't need a light on that side of the room. If you are going to have your clubs in your bag, maybe you'd want a little light there. Um, apart from that, you get the ambient light from the projector screen. You might have monitors on. That's all I've needed as far as lights. Does it need to be ceiling mounted? Not at all. I, in my first build, I had an IKEA floor standing floodlight, LED floodlight. That just focused in from the side on the golf ball. If you're using Skytrack, general advice is don't have a light focused directly into the camera. Um, I don't think it likes that. Just like it can struggle sometimes in sunlight or bright sunlight. Um, lumens, link to light. Lumens, projectors, we've discussed aspect ratio, we've discussed horizontal keystone correction, which for most people seeing the mounting isn't important, but it is if you're going off to the side. Lumens is important. So the lumens generally is the brightness, roughly. I don't want to get involved in the, te te the technical terms of this, um, as I'll be way out of my depth. But generally, more lumens is a brighter image. Um, my general advice is 3,000 lumens is enough within a dark room to be able to, a, a light controlled room, so you've got no light, bright lights coming in and sunlight shining through an open window, to be able to get a good enough image. And all of my videos from four or five years ago, three years ago, will have been using a three to three and a half thousand lumens uh, projector. Further back it is located, the more that kind of light will slightly be reduced. So it also to do with how far back it will need to be. Um, but if you do have ambient light such as this, I've got all the lights on on the ceiling and the projector image is actually fine. I could still play golf quite comfortably here. Then you need to be getting up in my opinion to the kind of four and a half thousand, five thousand lumens uh, lumens, lumens, um, and that kind of thing. So again, when you're looking at projector, bear that in mind. Can you control the light? And do you want that kind of really bright, poppy, um, commercial grade image, which will cost a bit extra, or do you want to have something darker? Now, do bear in mind, unless you're spending big money, you may get something that's really bright, but if it's got a really bad contrast ratio, then you're going to have your brightest bits of the image, and you're going to have kind of greys being the blacks. And, um, this is 4K, but it's not got the best contrast ratio. If you're wanting, wanting a kind of cinema grade quality, deep blacks and 4K and a bright image, your, your budget's going to need to be high enough to support that. Again, I can help with projectors, get in touch, do calculations, talk about options with you, and I try to um, get you a price that will match the online retailers where I can earn something in the margin. If I can't, I just send you to the retailer and buy it to, buy it to them. Um, and it's also for lie. Um, in the simulator, we discussed the scoring. Another issue is, you know, when the ball is in a bunker, I still get to place the ball on a lovely bit of grass. When it's in the deep rough, I still get to place it on a lovely bit of grass. Um, the lie is huge, and if the software 
um, is not punishing that, so it's not forcing you to take a wedge from a bad lie, those kind of things, then the lie is going to be the score you hit at the end of the day. <laughs> and you know, my 60, uh, if I go back, it's somewhere on a YouTube video somewhere. Um, I can almost guarantee I probably only hit about six fairways and I just putted the lights out of the tournament. So um, just go and bear that in mind. It's great golf, brilliant competing, really intense. I'm not going to put that into eye. The intensity of playing online competitions when you go in there to win one, especially if you're streaming and you know someone's watching you who's wanting to beat you or you're wanting to beat them. I mean, that's probably really good practice for when I do this in a competition, which I, I've only done one in my life. Um, and maybe, maybe I'll do more in the future. Um, and it's also for laser. Laser, where's my little laser thing? Um, you can get a little building, I don't even know what they're called. Building laser things. Um, and they'll project a straight line. Really handy when you're setting everything up to get your software on there, get it running, get the golf ball, get your mat lined up, make sure the dot is through where you're going to place your launch monitor on the ball. And it just gives you confidence that all these things are lined up. And... Um, yeah, I use it for DIY stuff as well, um, when I do DIY, really handy. M is for mats, now, oh, I've done videos on mats, do I do it? Yes, so, um, there's no excuse, this is um, advertising here. So, I, I love mats, and I've done loads of mat videos. So, you get a lot of different types of mats. You can get, another. you can get thinner type mats, such as, um, they've got like fine backing, most of them. Um, a thinner pile, can't quite see, but it's not a big deal. It's maybe about a centimetre's worth of the pile. Um, and it means that you kind of, traditionally, when I used to go to a range, there'd be like almost like a carpet type material, very thin. And I'd often kind of skid the club through, and even though I would have hit it a bit fat, I actually got an okay connection with the ball. Um, also, it'll be one that maybe you get a bit of bounce, where the kind of club bounces off the surface because it can't go down and through. Um, they can be very durable, um, in my opinion, quite forgiving. Uh, some of them are quite premium mats, so I've gone through quite a few in the past. I'm not a big fan of them, I've never liked them. I'm standing on one here that's got a little 3D section in it as well, like a, um, which means it's a little bit of absorption. So when you hit it, it's going to actually like flex a little bit to absorb the impact. I actually like T-Turf. T-Turf is the thicker pile mats that mean I can insert a T, though I don't. Um, I hit down and through. Um, and I'm not afraid of kind of any artificial bounce. And if I hit it a little bit fat, it punishes me because the club is slowed down going through. But not punishing me as severe as some of the very dense mats. There are dense mats out there that are really thick and they can grab the club so quickly that if you're playing a lot of, lot of golf, I've heard of people struggling with um, uh, stress that it's putting on the body. So you've got to find where that compromise is. Now I've done videos in the past where I sell a thing called T35, that's under T, but I'll skip on at that point, um, which is a really non-dense mat and it means you can hit through. The fibres soften and over time they get even softer and it's nicer to hit through. Um, however, um, it did mean there was this wear pattern shown quite quickly, whereas now I sell a T40, I've been using this since January, I don't know if the video can show it, but I mean there's not you can barely see where they're um, very durable. You can stand on it and hit off it, though I actually prefer standing on that slightly harder matte material, albeit it's like cushioned underfoot, but by the time I'm balanced, it's great. Um, so I've got a separate stance mat. But you know, there's a lot of different mats out there. Do your research, different budgets. Um, I sell the T40 to probably 95% people, uh, of people. If you've got elbow injuries, shoulder injuries, T35 might be a good option for you because it softens over time, albeit it will look a bit more worn. It doesn't go bald, but it goes very soft. Um, if you do want traditional range mats, then I also supply those. However, they are out of stock um, right now due to the pandemic. T40s are in stock um, if you're interested. Um, there are other suppliers out there. Again, I'm not particularly wanting to uh, kind of go through all of the others. Um, a lot of people do like fibre built. I don't mind saying that they like fibre built. I like the soft. I liked hitting off it. I didn't necessarily like the feel of the the ball or the club on the on the fibre sitting on the fibre at the top. But a lot of very good feedback. Very happy users there. Just as I think there will be with the T40 and uh, T35 in the past. N is for Niwa. What is Niwa? Um, I, on my rebuilding the rebuilding my golf sim, I was looking for. What can I just get cheap material to hang at the sides and something for the ceiling? And to be honest, um, I found a photography backdrop on Amazon. I just typed in N W E W E R 
backdrop, and it was a cloth material that I could got like I got like six meters by three meters because I fold it back. Again, you can look at the series of video, and it's like twenty pounds, thirty pounds, dirt cheap. It's quite a thin material, but I've been using it for my ceiling protection. No issues yet. I mean, if it goes through the hole, then I'll spend another twenty pounds and put that up. Um, but it's worked really well for me. Um, and I'm just sharing the uh, sharing the knowledge if anyone else wants to do a similar thing. Otherwise, you can go with the nylon. It could be ripstop nylon. It could be um, PU coated nylon, which you can find. I, I, I've got a roll of it, which I've never bothered selling, um, which other people have used in the past. And that can be ideal, just getting like a one and a half meter by, I don't know, eight meters. And you could fold it up, fold it along the edge of your frame, fold it down and attach it in some way to the sides of your screen. And that's a really tough material, will do the job well. So very good, Niwa or nylon, very good for the kind of side and ceiling protection. Um, netting is the third one, it all ends, I don't know why they are for this section. Um, high impact netting um, is another solution for being able to wrap around your cage um, and just make sure no golf ball that can escape. So when I had a cage design, um, I had glass doors behind the screen. So although I had an impact screen, if I ever did punch a hole through it, I wanted that assurance that there's going to be a second material. And it was just convenient that I had this huge net that I could just, just lazily wrap around the frame, knowing the worst case scenario, the golf ball is going to be caught by that. So high impact netting, again, there's various suppliers out there that can do that. Uh, oh, it's for OGT. OGT ran the best tour. They have now um, uh, evolved and um, continuing to evolve. And I say there will be exciting times ahead. But my four and a half years on uh, online golf tour were phenomenal. I flew, I flew over to Vegas and Chicago, met up with various of the people I competed against on the tours, um, played golf. Um, some of the golf in Vegas was brilliant, such a wonderful trip. Made some great friends. So just that's a thank you to uh, all the guys that were involved with OGT. Mainly uh, Zmax or Zmax, um, John Mayer and uh, Hogan Woods, who were fantastic at uh, running it back then. Uh, P is for projector, I don't need to say anything more about that. P is for putting. Putting on a simulator is, oh, it's a, it, when you first start, it's a nightmare. You get a friend around, you say, yeah, let's play some golf. You give them like a 14 foot putt and they hit it about 40 yards. There's just, <laughs> you know, no one they will hit it. They just hit it too hard. They always hit it too hard, that first putt. Typically like three, four times too hard. Um, it could take months to hone in that putting. Now, I'm a lousy putter in real life. I on my videos, you might see I actually put left-handed by standing next to the GC2, um, which I'll get on to. Lefty righties. If you've got a combination of lefties, righties, if you're using a camera-based system like SkyTrack or GC2, you're going to have to pick it up and put it down to the other side, or you're going to have to have someone silly enough, like I do, to stand over it and hit your shot confidently. You're not going to actually like top the uh, unit, um, and it can be a pain. It's not ideal. That's where. The ceiling mounted systems um, or the radar systems um, are superior because they support lefty and righty play. And that's where you, you have to make your compromises about indoor, outdoor, left, right, what, what you need when you're selecting a launch monitor. Um, anyhow, back to putting. So putting is really difficult. You can put on most simulation software, you can have auto putt, hit it onto the green and then it will tell you, depending on how far away you are, did you have one putt, two putt, three putt, maybe some randomization. Um, I think even the, the, the PGA event, uh, European tour event that's being run at the moment with Trackman um, has auto putt and, and also it's not fully live streamed. It's a bit of a disappointment when we're, we're doing all this and it's like, why can't we see these guys sweating and, and going through the, the stress of the shots and putting would be fun. I mean, let's not take it too seriously. Anyhow, um, so uh, yeah, so you just have to accept it does take time. You will pick it up um, over time. Some systems are a little bit more, um, what's the word, variable in how well they, that's not the word, but anyhow, how well they read putts. So Skytrack tended to be pretty good, but it would have the odd offline read where you don't think you probably did that. GC2 generally is very, very good, though. If you if get down to very short putts, maybe only trying to hit it two feet because it's downhill and it's a five footer, um, it might say three degrees right when I feel I hit it dead straight. You just have to accept these things um, and some software has forgiveness built in some of the games designers are saying we're not we don't uh, you know different approaches so you just have to bear that in mind but um, putting is an integral part of how the enjoyment I've got of being on the uh, tour and taking part in events that stress of sinking a putt at the end to retain the rider cup or something that's that's pretty cool um, paperweight paperweight is what my uh, game laptop 
my first game on laptop is and what um, I would say one or two launch monitor releases are um, because they just haven't been able to uh, do what they said they would do reliably. Power sockets, piece for power sockets. When you're building in your design, you're going to need power for your projector, you need an HDMI cable routed somewhere. You're going to probably want a monitor, a PC, uh, your launch monitor. You're going to think, okay, in my case, I've got, um, I've actually got 7.1 surround sound for movies. Um, so I've got an amp there. Um, I'm also playing guitar in here, so I've got a subwoofer, I've got a mixer. I, I originally put like eight um, sockets and thought that's going to be more than enough. I'm just checking it's eight. No, six. Two at the front, two at the back. I mean, I've never used those two at the front on them. I've got, I've got a wireless router back there. I've got a, a security camera. Um, I've then added keyboards, phone chargers, basically, yeah, put in more power sockets than you need. Yes, you can always just buy yourself an extension cable afterwards, but I would rather have just had them factored in when I first did it. We're getting near the end. How long have I been? Is it, can I see? I don't know. Oof, too long. No one's watching. Uh, Q is for QED. Uh, QED Unicorn. I struggled with Q. Again, it's going to be a really obvious one, but I can't think what it is. Um, so the Unicorn QED is one of the ceiling mounted systems. There's things like the uh, GC Hawk as well. And it supports lefty righty because it's ceiling mounted, it doesn't care which side it's on. Um, and it seemed to be, you know, a lot of people that have been enjoying that thing, and it's, it's, it's a very interesting unit. Um, so it gives an option for people that do need lefty righty, would like to have the camera based system rather than the radar, and worth your consideration is all I would say. I'm not currently reselling it, um, it might be something I can get involved with, I'd like to. Uh, but it's just one of the uh, one of the options. It's got named here because it's Q. Um, R is raw. I sell raw material. Raw impact screen material means it doesn't have eyelets and edges to be forced around it. This material doesn't fray, can be neatly cut, and it actually can just be folded in and gripped using tarp clips, which I'll get onto. So raw material means you just get a sheet of material. Um, finished material is where you have um, edges sewn in and you have eyelets. I actually find Raw material as easy to work with possibly than even eyelets because you can just use tarp clips and fold a bit more, a bit less material in and fold the excess behind the screen like I've done in my own design. It's just explaining the terminology in case people have seen raw and aren't sure what it means. Rough top, R-O-V-T-O-P, R-O-V-T-O-P are these little things. It's a brand again on Amazon of tarp clip. Quite a big clip um, compared to other ones. That's another tarp clip, a little bit smaller. Um, and then a really small tarp clip and then some tiny ones I did on one video. And the reason I like the rough top ones are they're sturdy, they've got a little uh, screwing nozzle on them to be able to tighten and to release the clip so I can make adjustments if it's too, too much tension, make an adjustment if it's sinking too much, fold a bit more material in. Really quick and easy to get a screen up and to mount them, um, though I because they are bigger clips it does mean you need to just get your side protection slightly in of the clips if you want to hide them and not have them visible. Um, Ryder Cup, I was Ryder Cup, um, again I've taken part in the Ryder Cup, um, well I've, I've been captained it many times, um, on OGT where we've had about 45 Americans versus 30 rest of the world, um, good friends from Australia, Canada, across the UK, the Netherlands, um, and and beyond, I'm trying to think of else. I'll, I'll be missing people out. And it's just been fantastic. It's the best thing I've done on simulated golf because we're taking part in a, a genuine competition that is enforced. That where the tour is running it properly. This was on OGT where they're enforcing all the rules and all the games. We're doing old shots. We're doing scramble. We're doing better ball. Um, the singles comes down. People are streaming it live on YouTube. The, the, the pressure, the, the stress, but the friendships that have been made over it have been fabulous. Best thing I have ever done and ever will do on simulated golf, I believe. Oh, as for radar, we've mentioned you've got your camera ceiling mounted systems, you've got the camera systems that um, are on the floor, and you've got your radar ones at the back of the room. Different technologies, pros and cons versus indoor, outdoor. Again, that's uh, another debate. Oh, it's also for racing simulator. If you've got this set up, um, and you want to multi-purpose it, obviously cinema, should put C for cinema, why not use it for sports and movies? Another thing is you get yourself one of the uh, force feedback steering wheels and a little stand. I use an Ikea Poang chair, I could put P for Poang. It's a great chair that sits nicely under my Thrustmaster 3 
thousand OS, I think it is, or three hundred OS. Um, and it means that I can be doing racing on the full setup. Um, of course, there are other ways of doing it. Like I've now got a VR headset, so I don't even have to be in the simulator. I can just put the headset on and use the steering wheel. But um, it's another nice little uh, multi-purpose thing to add to your golf sim if you're a bit of a um, gaming nerd. Um, R is for rage. I already mentioned full verbal. Um, I don't know why, but I, I outdoors I suffer golf rage. Indoors I just go. I think it's the expectations that I, I've shot so much better indoors that I expect me to shoot well, and then when I don't, I go full verbal and damage things. Rage is not a good thing. I bought a um, punch bag, heavy punch bag, and um, sprained my wrist the very first time. I thought I'm going to punch that and smacked it, and um, was out of golf for about two weeks because I sprained my wrist. So, yeah, avoid rage. S is for Skytrack. So I'm a Skytrack reseller. If you are looking at buying a Skytrack, please consider using my coupon code. You type in hybrid me at the uh, checkout or when they're running promotions it's hybrid me 250 um it really helps me as a business and as i say if i'm helpful in your purchase please consider doing that this is also for shanky golf been in lots of my videos uh pga teaching professional down in ipswich very good mate of mine i've played darts at him on a few videos a while back um a phenomenal golf coach um he he coaches so many of us on the tour simply using facetime or if you've got multiple camera setups Stick your phone aside, let him have access to your data, and let him just see a few swings. And normally it's one swing, and it's that's that's my suggestion. And it's it's so many of us are reliable, uh, reliable, reliant on his advice. I'm, I'm difficult to teach, but um, um, fantastic guy. And if you're looking at getting any kind of online coaching, uh, particularly during lockdown, uh, please check out Shanky Golf, um, Shane Warren down in Ipswich. Um, he'll uh, he'll get you sorted. Um, shanks, S is for shanks, who I'm not going to mention, am I? Um, yesterday I must have hit 20 shanks out of about 200 shots. I, I'm not normally shanking the ball, just just one of those days. Um, I do bear in mind, indoors you do weird things, you line yourself up based upon lines on the mat and the launch monitor, so there is, there is a difference. And again, under I, I should have put indoor swing syndrome. What is indoor swing syndrome? You, you do things differently. Indoor swing syndrome is weird. Um, so many people buy the launch monitor and think, I normally hit my 7 iron 180 yards. And, well, do you? Do you? And my, my SkyTrack or GC2 isn't working because it's only showing 150 yards carry. Not yet. I, I trust the system probably most of the time. It's going to be, you're not quite swinging as you would outdoors. You're not as free. It takes a while to kind of free yourself up. And also you're doing different things. You might, outdoors, I think I set up very much pointing right as you can do on feet. Whereas, Indoors, I, I have my feet level because that's well, that's probably why I'm pulling everything actually. <laughs> it's just dawned on me why I'm probably pulling everything indoors. <laughs> I should watch this video about myself. Um, indoor swing syndrome is real and give yourself time to kind of get used to it and possibly accept, think about the fact that the you know, using artificial alignment. Um, yeah, don't, don't immediately start blaming the equipment when it may not be. Um, S is for spin. Why did I put spin on this? That's not interesting. Um, mats, yeah, so mats can affect spin. You may get more spin, um, not sure if it less. Probably depends on the type of um, type of mat. And of course, the software depends on the um, settings for the greens and things. Um, yeah, not sure why I put that on there. Not that interesting. I'm sure it's a better point earlier. Steel rope, S is for steel rope. As I said, I use tensioned rope. So if you want to watch my rebuilding the golf sim videos, um, this is that stuff across the top and it's four millimeter. Uh, rope that again I, I provided more details in other videos. It means I can mount my whole screen setup without any of the bars, therefore I have no risk of any ricochet coming back and it's cheap. The rope is cheap. The only thing that's expensive is the tensioning tool used to tension it. But before going down the steel wire approach, do check that your building is going to be sufficient to handle the strength as you tension that rope. You don't want to be pulling in a brick just from the top that's got no weight on it and end up damaging your building. Check, check you've got something that can handle it. Um, then we're on to S clips. What are S clips? S clips are, well, this is long. Is anyone gonna make it through the video? I doubt it. S clips are these things. I showed you carbines earlier. They're great for hooking through an eyelet, sticking onto a tension steel wire, curtain rail, whatever it will be. Just, just a neat little uh, thing that you can buy. S is for steel frame. If you don't want a tension wire, a lot of people, whether it's commercial enclosure or whether you're doing a DIY build, particularly if it's freestanding, 
You just want a steel frame and all the connectors. Um, I've used 33 mil. Some people have used the larger size. I mean, they're quite bulky. It's like scaffolding. And you have to buy all of the connectors, like elbow connectors. Um, you can have a, a single elbow, which is like a two join at the bottom corners. You can have three way there, three way at the back, three way down there. You can have pipe that length, that length, that length. And you can order it all from companies like Metals For You. Again, I've ordered it in the past when I've done previous designs and it allows you to do that DIY build to your custom size rather than being constrained by the commercial um, enclosure sizes. S is for Speed Golf. Check out one of my videos on the channel, please. Speed Golf. I managed to complete a round of golf on the simulator with eight foot gimmies, which was generous, but it was the tour event, in 14 minutes, seven seconds, I think it was. Um, I may have had one drink too many and actually contacted um, Guinness, <laughs> Guinness World Records to ask if um, anyone's got a record for that and whether I can be the, be the one to have it. But um, yeah, speed golf's fun. You can get around, if you're good at doing what you're doing and you're comfortable and you don't want to waste time, you can get a round of golfing on the simulator in half an hour. I mean, that, that 14 was extreme and I obviously didn't score, I think I scored two over, but would have been much better if I'd taken a bit more time on putts and things like that. Um, but I've also played in head-to-head -head matches online that have taken two hours plus to just play, um, two of us, and it's sociable, but it can be painful. So do bear that in mind. You can play as quick as you want, but if you play online, you can only go as fast as the uh, slowest person. T is for tarp clips, I've shown them. Different types, these are what you use to grip the screen material at the side. You can fold it back on itself to whatever size you need. So just get yourself enough material, maybe a tiny bit extra. Um, grip it, tighten it, and that allows you to then use the eye hook on them to be able to bungee cord or cable tie to your frame. Really quick and easy, it means you can work with raw screen material rather than needing a finished one with eyelets and all that kind of stuff. Um, T40, T35, I've mentioned them, two different types of matter cell. T40, um, I'm loving and recommend. Um, I'll give a shout out here for TXG Experience. I didn't even know what I was going to go through all the um, YouTubers that I actually kind of watch. Um, but I, I, these guys, I've just been really, really impressed with their videos. I think they've been, um, the, the information they give is just phenomenal. So this was just a, a, a yeah, just shout out for them. I only really, like, found them about a month ago. Um, but I do also watch the, um, the uh, uh, Alex Etches, I like, Lee Whitaker, one of my customers. So I'll give a shout out to Lee, he gave me a shout out on a video. Um, also, um, um, the old top bloke and Mark Crossfield stuff and Rick Shields, obviously, Peter Finch, all those kind of guys. One day I might get a shout out from someone else, so may as well give them a mention. Um, tears for Trackman, um, as I said, they acquired the developers that developed Jack Nichols Perfect Golf and um, that's enabled them to get the virtual uh, Trackman Virtual Golf software. Um, and uh, the Perfect Parallel guys that did the development, really good guys, met up with them at the Open once, um, just wished probably Trackman had um, done different things with, uh, with what they're doing. Uh, type 3, Type 3 is what I call my screen material, the premium screen material that I use here. Um, really soft, low bounce back, absorbs it nicely, is available as raw material. It's cut from a 3.1 metre roll, so you effectively get 3.1 metres by whatever distance you need and um, please get in touch if you are interested in that. T is for tees, as I mentioned, things like Bertie Pro tees, Tomahawks um, sit on the surface. You can use real tees with tee turf or you can stick rubber tees through and there's various other systems out there. Um, uh, Touchscreen monitor, um, I, I've got one, I use a handsfree, oh, I don't think I can remember the model number, H27 something, so I'm facing in front of you actually, you usually got the model number, no, not. Oh, HT273, I think. Um, and I liked being able to use touchscreen for going onto the grid. I, I added a virtual floating keyboard so I could have some functions on there. Lately, I've just been using the keyboard and I barely use the touchscreen other than just opening a few apps. Um, it can be good, but just make sure you've got software that properly supports touchscreen. If it doesn't, then the benefit you're going to get is less. And rather than spending £350 on a 27-inch touchscreen, you could spend £350 on a 55-inch um, uh, LED uh, plasma, or whatever it would be, um, which might be better served for you. So just, just bear that in mind. Um, T is for tension. Too much tension on your screen, you'll get too much bounce back. It'll also put more stress on the kind of edges. 
Um, if you get a thickish material like the Type 3, it actually just wants to hang nicely. It doesn't really need to be pulled tight in all the edges. So I just end up having one, two, three, four, five, six, six tarp clips on each side, secured at the bottom right, secured at the bottom left, not secured at the bottom, it's just sitting there. I've actually got an archery screen behind folding under my grass, um, if people care. I've got, again, probably every, uh, from the look of it, every 50 centimetres or so, I've got the, um, the uh, tarp clips on the top and fixing, so maybe six to eight on the side, maybe 12 on the top. Um, and this is a five meter by 2.8 meter screen. Um, but yeah, the tensioning, just, just enough to get rid of any ripples, but um, not trying to break it. But obviously if you buy a screen from anybody else, please follow their recommendations, um, not my own recommendations. T is for TGC, TGC is TGC 19. It's the, for most of my SkyTrack uh, customers um, and people that are getting involved in other launch monitors, um, it's a viable option um, around the £850 mark currently uh, as a one-off cost to be able to get you to play courses around the world or recreations of courses around the world. Um, I've used Jack Nicholas Bev Golf most of the time, uh, but I also take part in TGC competitions and tours, and um, that's probably a topic for another debate, E6 Connect being the other one to consider. WGT, World Golf Tour, is an option for Skytrack. It can run on an iPad, which is really good, as can E6 Connect which is a benefit. There's not a lot that runs on an iPad. I think there's awesome golf as well that I've seen in beta for the flight scope. Um, and that, that is a benefit that they can run on an iPad, but to get really comprehensive online play, all of the courses and everything like that, um, you're probably looking at a gaming desktop, gaming laptop. And right now, it's a um, proprietary system for GC2 like FSX, um, or it's going to be E6 Connect, TGC, or, uh, blah, blah, blah. or, or to get onto it very shortly, U is for unfinished, so when I mention raw screens, unfinished is also the same as raw, it just means it's not finished with eyelets and edges. Um, I've mentioned Unicore and QED, V is for vlog. Um, I am such a nervous golfer, I have no idea why I decided to actually like do a YouTube video of me playing golf, but it's been something I've really enjoyed, and even doing this video, um, it's filled a bit of time <laughs> for me, which why I've got a lot of time. Um, and it's it's kind of yeah it's just been um, it's been fun and enjoyable so I'm, I want to do more um, I did a couple of videos while I was out on the course I filmed the whole real round with a couple of friends and I wanted to do lots more and then YouTube changed it so I've got to have a thousand subscribers before I'm able to stream live on a mobile device so um, part of the purpose of doing these videos and particularly the educational ones which I hope this is for somebody, not for anyone, is, is that I might get the subscriber count up towards that thousands and then I can, then when we're unlocked or even in the next few weeks I might be able to do some videos out of the course again. Uh, w is for wine. Um, I whine a lot about stuff and complaints and stuff. It's like, I've just got to accept there are limitations in how well it can read a putt over four feet and that I'm not going to be the greatest golfer and that you're going to get an odd bounce off something. Um, wine is also for the other wine and plenty of my videos show that as well. X, this was a challenge, is exciting future. <laughs> yes, don't pick me up on that. Um, I know of at least one um, bit of software that is being built from the ground up uh, for the simulator market and is looking very, very interesting. Um, as I say, although um, OGT disappeared, new brilliant tours um, continue and emerging, more details will follow. Um, although Jack Nicholas Perfect Golf Company is being turned off by Trackman end of August, I know there is a replacement bit of software being developed as well as the other options that I've mentioned that people can continue to use. So um, there will be new launch monitors such as the Mevo Plus only launched this year or around December, I think January officially, I'm guessing. Um, and there will be more coming forward. So there are exciting technologies um, around and the future is bright. And we'll finish quickly with why is for YouTube. Um, I've seen all of these people with millions of subscribers announcing like um, they're going to Twitch or going to YouTube and all this stuff. I'm going to announce today that I'm sticking with YouTube and my 739 subscribers. Um, that's really big news for you, I know. Um, <laughs> no. And Z, I couldn't think of anything, so I put zip ties, the cable ties. I've done it, A to Z. Um, I hope some of that's useful. If it is, please subscribe, like the video, let me know um, what I could do better. Of course, I could add, do editing, but I'm doing it live. I tend to do most of my stuff live. 
Um, I'm, I'll probably revisit this at some point and do a kind of more polished video. Um, any questions? If I can help with any simulator designs, please get in touch. Uh, the website's on the screen. Um, Matt, screens, Skytrax, please use my logo. Anything um, I can help with, please get in touch. Thank you for watching if you watched any of this. Where can I stop it? Oh, I'm on the, I'm trying to use my laptop rather than the PC. Goodbye.